Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to The Halo Show. I'm Russell Nudson, and this is... I'm Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash. Good to see you, Russell. Thank you. Great to have you here. So today we thought we'd devote an episode to talking about the androgen receptor blockers that are in the marketplace and developing in the marketplace. So just to put that into context, uh, if we go back to our, uh, you know, our standard uh, picture of testosterone in the scalp, uh, in the hair follicle being converted to dihydrotestosterone, which is the culprit for the trigger for hair loss. That's about the enzyme 5 alpha reductase, and there's an elevated enzyme in balding um, areas. Okay, but both of these hormones don't become active unless they uh, bind to the receptor. And there's a specific receptor which we call the androgen receptor. The problem we have, just to remind you, is that the DHT, which is the scalp harmful one, is 100 times more likely to be bound than testosterone. There's a preferential binding onto the receptor. So the newest focus of, uh, of research in terms of developing new treatments is uh, we've already been through um, this with finasteride and dutasteride. We started this uh, you know, a long time ago with spray and lactone, for example. Mm -hmm. There are new ones like bicalutamide, but there are now even newer ones like, like cascoterone, and, uh, which is brigula, and also Kintor product, which is pyrolutamide, which are target-specific androgen receptor blockers. So, but they are medicines, right? So yes. the idea here is to find which part of the receptor is critical rather than blocking the whole of receptor because obviously the fear we've had in men is that if we block the binding of testosterone and we blind, block the binding of DH2 uh, uh, to the receptor, are we going to feminize them? Correct. That's been our big fear and that's one of the reasons why we haven't done this mm -hmm. to any great degree. There's a little bit of a movement now to using the weaker one, which is spironolactone, even in men at low doses like 25 milligrams. Because we were traditionally using this in, women, in female pattern. We were hormones. using this for females because it didn't matter. Uh, but so that's historically where we've gone in women, but also now a little bit in men. We've seen recent studies suggesting that's, uh, that's, a, that's a good treatment going um, uh, forward, off-label, of course, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because it's not recommended <coughs> yes. for hair loss in men. It's not even recommended for hair loss in women, to tell you the truth. But the reality is, we're drilling down here. So the theoretical benefit is if we could find the right receptor block here um, that didn't alter the DHT levels or the T levels uh, in our patients, then there'd be less fear of side effects yeah. of uh, playing with their hormones. We're not playing with their hormones, we're playing with the specific binding in the hair follicle that creates the problem. Because that's what a lot of people are concerned with, or how is this changing my hormonal profile? Yes. So they actually and they want to measure their blood level, which yes. of course isn't where the action is. So uh, that, that's really a problem. So, so this is an exciting area of research and there are new products coming on. But again, I would recommend caution to people about this. You really want to know that this isn't something that's just six months old or 12 months mm -hmm. old or two years old. You want to see some... Because a lot of these men have been around, but they're not uh, fully studied. Correct. And sometimes some of the studies that have, have been done have been you know, stopped uh, quite prematurely. Yes. Uh, and, as so well. the, and again, I'm not telling you to drill down to this level, but just remember that an awful lot of the trials stop at 24 weeks, mm. uh, which, is, which is the six month mark. And quite frankly, I'm, I know why they do it because of the cost involved and the complexity of it, but it really isn't good enough information for us to take to our young, uh, healthy patients mm. and say, oh, well, it didn't cause any harm in six months. And go, well, what about five years? Well, we don't know. It hasn't been around for five years. You've got to be honest about that. Yes. You can't, you can't do that. So we've got these, these new ones. But there's also other things that have been around for a long time, which we've talked about before, which is the ketoconazole shampoo. Now, ketoconazole is an antifungal agent, right? So just like... Just like antibiotics uh, attack bacteria, antifungal agents attack fungi. And the scalp has a Malathusia um, species of fungus that lives and reproduces in your hair follicle. And what we've discovered over the years is that, it, is that the, the fungi on the scalp, they cause inflammation in the scalp. We've known about inflammation associated with baldness for over 40 years. There was a study done in the 1980s taking biopsies of um, bald males showing that 40% of them had 
on the biopsy had noticeable mm. significant inflammatory. And we see that a lot of time when people that are losing hair, their scalp can be quite inflamed. Absolutely. So we know that they, they, that they cause the, uh, the inflammation. So ketoconazole as an antifungal agent has been around uh, for 30 years. And there have been studies since 2001 showing that it, as a supplementary treatment, not as a standalone treatment, mm. but as a supplementary treatment, there's going to be a response in patients using finasteride and ketoconazole yep. versus using uh, the fungi, uh, sorry, the, uh, the fin uh, finasteride by itself. So what that tells you is that we are unpacking this idea that inflammation is a very important part of the process for yes. some of our patients, right? And that anything we can do to reduce the inflammation is going to be helpful. For example, the big thing we had recently was COVID. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things was noticed in America by a physician was that uh, the, the acceleration balding in his patients mm -hmm. that had COVID was much faster than the acceleration of balding in these patients that didn't have COVID. And so this became a sign, you know, and named after him in, in 2022. Um, but it just em emphasizes the thing that this is multifactorial, right? It's not all about one thing. No, but also, yeah, but you're right. And so the, the inflammation is important, but we also know that ketoconazole has another effect, which Correct. is the- It comes back down to here. Yeah. So again, only, only in the last little while have we understood the concept that it also has a, an effect on blocking the androgen receptor. So if you said to yourself, well, wow, if I can use a topical product, mm -hmm. right, that helps block the androgen receptor and reduce inflammation, then why wouldn't I use it? And the answer is we should. Yes. And then I recommend it to almost every patient because I think that this has this dual purpose in yes. here. You know, we need to reduce the inflammation in the scalp because inflammation causes shedding. And the thing that panics people, male and female, the most is the increase in shedding. Yes. Right? So anything that reduces the inflammation that potentially reduces the shedding is of great benefit. Um, and if you also get the added benefit of blocking the receptor, then this is something, the ketoconazole shampoo, as distinct from every other shampoo on the market that claims to have mm -hmm. a great effect. Yes, this is a medicine because it's antifungal. It's, yes. not, it's not herbal remedy or anything like that. It's a, it's, a, it's a medicine. But it's a safe medicine that we've used for decades for treating fungal infections. And, and one point to, to at least acknowledge on this is that anything that you use topically, but specifically this, you actually have to use it properly. So you have to keep it on for a, three to five minutes. Exactly, which a lot of people don't. It's hard. Well, one of the ways to do it, which someone suggested to me, is right, wet your hair yeah. before you get in the shower, apply it five minutes before you're in the shower, yeah. do whatever you're doing, yes. then go and have your shower. Correct, yes. And I would recommend that because anything you leave on for 30 seconds, is doing nothing, yeah. and that includes caffeine, by the way. Yeah. So, so don't get caught up in this idea that you use something very quickly and it has an effect. Um, in fact, all of the anti-dandruff shampoos, um, you know, have things like zinc pyrethrin in them, or they have selenium in them. They're all anti-inflammatory, and anti-inflammation is a good thing. So, anything that's a like chemist line anti-inflammatory or you know, dermatitis or a, a scalp psoriasis or seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff, anything that says it's an anti-dandruff shampoo that you get from a pharmacy mm -hmm. is worth exploring to see whether it helps it's you fine. because those ones are the ones that have been properly clinically proven rather than the people doing their advertising on the internet. So I think this is a really important topic because, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about other medications, but this is, as you said, the emerging uh, sort of uh, you know, not necessarily the holy grail, but certainly something to, to aspire to also look at trying to optimize that from that perspective. Well, this is, this is the way medicine develops, right? Yeah. We start with an overall treatment like penicillin, yeah. right? It was the first antibiotic uh, uh, by Fleming. And uh, then we've developed ones that are more, more target specific, more target specific, more target specific, so that they don't have these unintended consequences. The same thing's happening here. Start with minoxidil as your overall stimulator, stimulates everything. Then you get to finasteride, which is targeting the enzyme. Now we're targeting the receptor. It's becoming yes. way, way more target specific. And hopefully it means means it's at least as effective, if not more effective. Mm -hmm. And because it's so targeted, we don't get these unintended consequences of side effects that yeah. we would otherwise weren't expecting. Very good. Well, uh, thanks for that, because that's a really, I think, a really useful uh, topic to go through. I hope you found that useful. Uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.